Welcome. You have joined Pray to Stay in the Race as we share scriptures, testimonies, and prayer with encouragement to be bold, be strong, for our Lord God is with you. Welcome to Pray to Stay in the Race. We are so thankful that you are tuning in. And for all of you that are writers or you need to be encouraged to pick up that pen and start writing, or you just want to hear something that maybe you're at a stopping point, and this is going to push you to keep going. Don't stop. Don't give up. And so that's what Pray to Stay in the Race is all about. And so I'm going to open in prayer because, you know, we do everything in prayer. He says, be anxious for nothing, but be about my father's business he wants us to be about. He says that um, to come boldly to the throne of God and take his grace and mercy and so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to the throne room of God. Father God, we praise you and thank you for today. I thank you for everyone who will hear that it will be words of encouragement, words of, of pushing people into the plans that you have, that they just need one encouraging word, Lord. And we bless you that you chose Debbie and I to encourage writers to don't stop, but to keep going, stay in the race. It doesn't matter how long you've been writing on that chapter or that book. God has a plan. So I give you glory, Lord, that salvation, deliverance, healing, and your touch will go forth in this episode. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Oh, it may form, but it won't prosper. We give you glory and honor that this is the day you've made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, Debbie, I'm praising God because we know, you know, in movies, there's more than three takes. There's usually like 15, 17, 20, who knows, 50 but in this podcast take, we've had to, this is our third take. And you know what? That reminds me of the triune of God, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. And so I'm thankful that this podcast will go forth to reach the ears that the words God put in your mouth shall go forth. You're in agreement with me with that? I certainly am. Thank you, Latanya. Hey. Thank you for your perseverance. <laughs> hey, so let me ask you this question. How important is prayer to you? No, oh, it's essential. <laughs> it's a very important part of my life, yes. <laughs> yes, amen. And so when we're writing a book, we need to be in communication with our Lord throughout that whole process, right? That's exactly right. I consider the Lord my senior editor, my senior writing partner. And so it makes makes writing quite a journey. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> so let me who did you write? Your your first book is the the oil the oil man. Who did you write this book for and who was your audience? My audience was young people. I would say 12 years old and up. Um, people my age have read The Oil Man and they love it. So yeah. it's good for young people of all ages. It has younger children in the story, but it's not really a young uh, person's story, a young child's story. I think they would enjoy it, actually. Right. But uh, my target audience was young people, I would say 12. And so when, when this was dropped into your spirit. Um, had you been thinking about writing a book? No, I had <laughs> not. But the Lord gave me the idea of a village that needed lanterns. There's no electricity. They have a lot of darkness. Uh, this takes place in a, in a village that's high in the mountains. And because of where it's located, they have only six hours of sunlight each day. Oh, okay. And so they need lanterns uh, for their light just when they're out and about in the afternoon and the evening. And then they have lanterns in their homes. 
And so it's named the oil man because that man gives them their oil for their lanterns. His name is actually Ebenezer. Ebenezer. So call him the oil man because he gives them their And so we were talking a little bit about the lanterns and that back in those days, they didn't have like power lines and power like we have today. And and so I was telling you, I thought of the scripture that the the, uh, word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And that as they use those lanterns to go out into the dark, I mean, they couldn't see the whole the whole street, the whole path only like a few steps that they were going to take. That's right. Having those lanterns keeps us from running ahead of the Lord. Oh, now that's and good. We were not running too far ahead. And it, I see it as having respect for the light and um, letting the light show you where, where you're going. But um, yeah, you, you can't run too far ahead when you're dependent on a lantern. So it um, keeps you in step with the Lord. So that setting that um, you were sharing about the village and all that, did you want to add some more to it, the setting of the story? The setting is up in the mountains. Like I said, they have six hours of sunlight, uh, which is, I think, not unlike our world today. You know, we just have so much darkness that we need all the light we can get. And... Uh, so that's where it takes place is uh, in the land light of village. That was a good illustration of the light and the world because we are in, if we're not in a dark world right now, if people can't see the darkness in our world right now, how much light is needed. And we know that we are the light. So we praise God that you're shining your light right now to help some others who have that word, that voice that needs to get out. That was powerful. So um, you said the oil man is Ebenezer? That's right. And so his job was to make sure everyone had oil. Yes. He has an oil shop that's right in the center of Lamplighter Village. And so a lot of things happen in that oil shop. It's like a meeting place for everyone and that what that means also is that Ebenezer knows everyone in the village they know him and um, you see a lot of interaction between Ebenezer and the villagers and get a taste of the kind of a person he is and how he handles the people. Amen. So how does the story begin and tell us about the two main characters? It begins with a guy named Arnie. He is 18 years old, and he's an angry young man. He has lived in the village all his life. His dad is the village blacksmith. Um, He takes his two younger friends to a barn one night because he wants to show them something. All right. And something happens in the barn, and Arnie winds up taking off and leaving and he goes off on his own adventure the two kids have to go back to the village by themselves and so you trace arnie's adventure through the dark forest and um that's arnie the second um character is micah he's 16 years old he is raised on a ranch that is south of the village and he has a falling out with his dad. He leaves mm. home and he okay. winds up in the village the same night that Arnie has left the village. He doesn't know Arnie. He doesn't know anyone. Micah doesn't know anyone in the village. And so the reader learns about the village through Micah. He meets Ebenezer the oil man and spends time with him. And meanwhile, Arnie is out on his adventure going through the dark forest, going over the ridge, and he discovers so, things that he's never seen before. And so that's how you had to, uh, it came to you, okay, I've got to show my readers what it looks like, the path, the journey they're taking. 
And this is how we get to the map in your yeah. book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I realized I had to have a map. I had to draw a map <laughs> to know where I was because there's all these um, locations and things happening. And so it took me about 17 times to draw a decent map um, that was usable for me to write it. But I also wanted it to be in the book so that the reader could um, see where things were. And so once I finally got a decent enough map, then I presented it to John and Adrian. And I said, can you um, do something with this, you know, to make it better for the book? And so we put it on the screen. John gave us the technology to do it. And Adrian and I worked together with that on the screen. I'm up here and she's down there in New Mexico. But we worked on it for weeks, um, about a month and a half really, and worked on it. And so you can see the transformation of the original map and then what she came up with with the color map. But we put the uh, a black and white version in, in the book. And so I want to bring out that Adria is um, Jonathan's wife, your daughter in love, who is an illustrator. And so I believe Jonathan is showing my book, um, my children's book, Blaze, Did You Pray? And so um, this is where you can see the variety of artwork that she does. And so she's available if anybody wants to uh, get her to be there, her illustration for you. And so um, I'm, I'm so excited about all the things that God is doing. And now in this, in your book, um, as you see in the map, um, did you think, how did you know that you needed a map? I mean, what triggered you that, okay, I got to get this map, which brought in other people into your, into preparing your book. See what I mean? Yeah. Well, it was two things. Um, I read so many books to John, you know, the Chronicles of Narnia and uh, Wind in the Willows. Um, I can't think of Hank the Cow Dog books. And in some of those books, not all of them, but in some of them um, were maps. So the, okay. you the territory and it just draws a person in because you're creating another world. world. So the, map, the map is essential. It was essential to me, though, as a writer, because I can't write about something if it's not real to me. If, yes. uh, if the character has to go up this ridge and over the hill and through the woods, but there's a river in the way, then how's he going to get across right. the river? You know? Yes, yes. Um, so there's real logistics that you have to deal with. And living in the Pacific Northwest, I'm very conscious of trees and rivers and hills and things like that. And um, you put it into the story, it makes it even more interesting. So I wanted to share that just like how that map came through in your book, in my children's book, it was, I have, was planning for Adria to um, do the whole illustration throughout the book, but it was doing COVID when we were doing that. Cause it took us, took me like a, almost a year and a half just to get the thing published and put together for editing and all that um, with COVID going on. So then, um, the publishing company was didn't have workers. And then Adrian had got really sick. And then it was just, I it, all of a sudden, I just heard the Lord said, it's done. Put in pictures. So I got pictures, prints, as well as illustration. So my plan, what I wanted, it turned because I heard the Lord said, do it this way. So sometimes you just, you know, he's going to get what he wants in your work one way or the other, you know, right. <laughs> if we're listening. So we That's have right. to listen to the voice of God as we're writing, because he knows everyone who's going to see the book. We That's don't right. know everyone who's going to see it. Exactly. He knows who's <laughs> going to see it. He has those people in mind. And I presented um, the oil man to the Lord many times. Many times. Yes. <laughs> if he's your senior writer, then you got to spend time and listen to him, what he has yes. to say. And it just 
because he'll come up with things that you never thought of. Thought of, yes. <laughs> so that's where that praying comes in and that our relationship with our Father God, you know, with the Lord and his word, putting that word in us to come out the way he wants it to come out. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this question here, Debbie. What did you receive? What did you learn about writing novels? I had to learn about published writing. There's do's and don'ts about that. And so I went online and read, and um, I had a um, an app on my computer that helped me with editing. But beyond that, for novel writing, I had to learn the do's and don'ts of that. And so I did go on um, websites of other authors, and the main one I went on was Jerry Jenkins's. Um, website because he has a whole ministry himself of reaching out to younger writers to explain to them the do's and the don'ts of novel writing. So that was invaluable to me. I learned about the point of view character we call it the POV character, the uh, character arc. The character is one way when you start the story and then mm -hmm. all these things happen to that character, and now we see the transformation. How is he now at the end of the story? And um, those things I had to learn. So I had 45 chapters. I mean, the, the story was essentially done by the time I'm reading all this information. So it took me, Latonia, two years, years. to edit mm -hmm. 45 chapters, but it was worth it. You don't want to rush into anything. Once it's published, it's done. It's done. <laughs> yeah. I wanted something I could be proud of. I didn't want to make a lot of amateur mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so I had to do a lot of editing. Um, they, Jerry Jenkins was saying it's, it's ferocious editing. You got to be willing to cut out the stuff, that the dead wood that you don't need. Yes. And, I enjoyed the process of it, really. So I, I heard about <laughs> I heard about the two two years, but I believe you said it took seventeen years to actually get that whole book. So I was fifteen years writing and then two years editing. Praise yeah. God. Hmm. I do. I don't know how you come about, but I do a lot of journaling, and yes, um. Do. And and so when I when I'm journaling and then I also keep a lot of newspapers that so I had to come up with a different system because thank God for technology. So I don't have piles of newspapers everywhere, because if I need actual dates or times or places, I can go to the newspaper for some of the books where I'm needing that info, mm -hmm. um, because you can't just say, oh. At the hotel on January 15th. Well, what hotel, what place, what happened? You know, facts. Uh, if if you're if it's not a fictional or a novel, you know what I'm saying? So you, you have to have those. Yeah. To verify those facts, if it was a, a date or a mm -hmm. time. I was going to say um, I use a spiral notebook. That is my secretary. Secretary. And I get an idea. Uh, like late at night when you're not thinking of anything else and you know, something comes to your mind, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm not going to remember it. So I write Right. It yes. Yeah, because uh, you can be anywhere. Sometimes I've been on an airplane or in a store or so. So whatever piece of paper I have, I'll scratch that thing down. And then when I get home, I'll transfer it into where all my notes are. So look, let me ask you this. Do you have to have a certain format when you turn your your um, manuscript into someone to um, edit or to review or to format it for you? I believe you said Amazon. You went through Amazon for I'm formatting. Thinking, they have um, a, a template or? I believe it's called PD. Oh, I forget what it's called now. Um, but I had a formatter do that for me. That's why I'm not remembering it. Um, right. But Delegate Amazon, that thing. What's that? 
I said, that's why we delegate to those who know those things. Yes. And my formatter did the cover, the, the front and back cover. And okay. Did a wonderful job. Amen. Amen. Well, okay. So what is the Lord's message in this, excuse me, in this story? Um, I believe you gave me three scriptures that we, you know, because whatever we do, I believe it's over in, um, in Ephesians, um, he says, what, 20, around 20, whatever we do, do it wholeheartedly unto the God, unto our Lord. And then also, um, he says, and he, he will do it exceedingly abundantly above we could ever imagine. He will turn that thing around for us. Yes. So let's see what the Lord wants to bring out in your book. I wanted to say one of the scriptures that helped me in writing was in 1 John chapter 1, verse 4. These things we write to you that your joy may be full. Mm. That's a goal. And John just said it so beautifully. I wanted to write something that would give joy to people in discovering who God is, how does he relate to me, how yes. in the world can I relate to him. It's And the, the response to that is, is joy. That, that's what John could see that happening in his readers. And yes. that's the goal for writers. We want to spread the joy of who God is, how much he loves us, how much he knows us and cares yes. for us. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's our strength. That's yes, right. it, that's how we get through all of this. That's the right. Joy of the Lord. Ooh. There's also First John chapter one verse three, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son Jesus Christ. This story is about fathers and sons. Yes. It's about a couple of fathers, a couple of sons, and they have broken relationships. And so in the story, we discover the father and the son who mentor them and bring them that healing, the wholeness. Amen. Okay. And then Ephesians 5, verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Ebenezer is the giver of light. And as you read the book, you'll find out there's another light besides what's in the lantern. Lantern. Yes. Yes. The light. And that's what Arnie and, and Micah discover for themselves. Uh, oh, the Deb, can I enter? So where you said walk as children of light, um, I want to bring out also that that light is the characteristics of Christ, of our Lord, the fruit of the spirit, which is full of goodness, righteousness. That's how we today in this dark world, we That's need right. to be walking in that joy, that love, that peace, that righteousness of the tr and the truth. Amen. It's essential. We need his light more and more as the days get darker. Yes. And it's getting dark. It's going to be darker. <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to grow lighter. We're We, the light, will grow even the more. We That's have right. to. That's right. Ephesians 6, 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand well, actually, it's withstand. Withstand. And having done all to stand. stand. And that word stand becomes very important. Um, Arnie and Micah have light, but now they have to stand. Well, that yes. sounds simple, but the Lord, many times he asks us to stand in places where we'd rather run away. And so that standing becomes a very powerful force within itself. Okay. and. So you'll see in the book uh, how that's illustrated. Well, I'm going to have to, like I said, add The Oil Man by Debbie Oshman to my library so I can find out what is in that barn. 
<laughs> and what and what else went on? Amen. So um, we're going to have you close us. Oh, we almost forgot. How can they get your book? Where can they get your book? It is available on Amazon. Just go to Amazon.com and search for The Oil Man. After you put in The Oil Man, put my last name, Osherman, A-U-S-H-E-R-M-A-N, and it will take you right to the book because there are many other things at Amazon that have to do with an oil man. So you want my the title and my name. So can you tell us anything else you wanted to, we missed, or you want to share before you pray? One of the last things that I was thinking about is that this story is about two runaways who were taught to stand. And that's what the Lord does with us. He takes our weaknesses and turns them around, and he can make it a strength. Uh, he did that with Arnie and Micah, whatever it is you're struggling with, give it to him and uh, he'll take it and use it in whatever way he can and be for our good and obviously for his yes. glory. I would say that. Amen. Can you lead us in prayer? Amen. Father, so, thank you so much that you, thank you God. have given us your light you've given us your tools you've given us your armor thank you given us everything we need to fight the good fight and to stand and to shine our lights lord i pray for whoever would read the oil man and latanya's books on prayer hallelujah would, thank you lord for the opportunity to pass the baton to the yes. other generation this baton of yes. light thank you lord that you're helping us to do the works that you have prepared for us to do thank you father we bless your name amen, amen. Amen. Well, Debbie Osherman, we praise God for you. And on the count of three, we're going to say pray to stay in the race. One, two, three. Pray, pray to, to stay, stay in, the race. in the race. God bless you.